Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the National Music Museum. It's a special evening as we continue to partner with the uh, music department and a special recital tonight, which will again feature some of our National Music Museum instruments. Throughout the concert, our string and keyboard curator, Arian Sheets, will come in to give you a little bit of information about the instruments themselves. You can find some in your printed program, so we invite you to take a look at that as well, as well as the biographies of the artists. I have my phone in my hand just as a reminder to reinforce to all of us if you will turn your phone off or at least uh, put it on vibrate uh, because of the sound of the phone going off, well, it's not really period for the, for the music that you're going to hear tonight. So it's just always helpful. So let's, uh, let's welcome to the stage. Uh, they're still warming up, so I'm just going to kill some time. <laughs> I tell a few jokes, but I don't tell jokes very well. You can hear them warming up. Anthony and Juana. There is a concert coming up on Friday. Friday happens to be Good Friday. We're still open our building because we have exhibit hours and there is a concert, a one part of our NMM Live concert series at noon on this Friday. So if you would like to join us, uh, it is soprano saxophone and I forget uh, what Brett does. Do you remember, Arian, the concert coming up on Friday? Um, it's saxophone and piano. Saxophone and piano. So if you want to join us, NMM Live on Good Friday. All right, let's see, let's see if they're ready. Do you want to prop the green room door open? <laughs> we do things really formal and very professional here. All right, so with that, let's welcome Anthony Neslin and Dr. Iwana Galu.
Hi, I'm Arian Sheets. I'm curator of stringed instruments, and Joanna has asked me to give a little introduction uh, to some of the instruments that are being played tonight as they uh, rearrange themselves and get reacquainted. Um, so the instrument that I'm going to introduce first is a viola that Joanna is going to play. Um, they're going to play a Mozart duo next. And the viola is a relatively new acquisition. It was donated last year by Philip Kass, the violin expert. And it is by Franz Geisenhof, who was one of the most prominent makers in classical Vienna. So he lived um, right in the period when Beethoven was alive, when Schubert was alive. And this particular instrument has the brand of the Czartoryski family who uh, uh, Adam Czartoryski was a uh, prince in Poland. And so this was originally part of a quartet. Actually, the bra that brand that is, is down there. Um, so this was originally part of a quartet of instruments by Geisenhof, who was this prominent maker. Um, also on this viola is a stamp of the Gesellschaft der Musikfreunde, uh, which was a important uh, chamber music and music promotional society that was founded in 1812. And so this instrument passed into their ownership and then was eventually sold in 1929 at auction. Um, so this instrument uh, is uh, very typical of the type of instruments made in Vienna in this period. It's a very small viola, but it was designed to function in a chamber music setting like you're going to hear it uh, tonight. And um, the instrument, it's very likely this, very, this viola itself could have been heard by Beethoven and Schubert and other prominent uh, musicians of the time. We don't know who might have heard it or played it, but uh, no, it's yeah. almost certain that some very important people did uh, hear and play this instrument over time. So you can uh, use your imagination to <laughs> figure which ones.
Well, that certainly gave the fiddles a little workout there. Um, <laughs> you want to like that. Um, it's really a delight to hear that, uh, that Viennese music played with a Viennese uh, viola. Um, so I was going to introduce the two violins. They're both Cremonese, but they were made 150 years apart. Um, so the violin that Anthony's using throughout this entire program was made by Giovanni Battista Turuti, who uh, lived in Cremona, and he postdated the major classical period of Cremonese violin making when Stradivari was alive and the Amadis. Um, the instrument that we have was made around 1810. And uh, what's very appropriate, uh, given Anthony's career as an educator, was this instrument came to us from another educator. Um, Lucy Weed, who lived in Yankton, was beloved of many, many uh, string students growing up in uh, the Yankton area. And uh, she and her husband left their instruments to the museum specifically so that they could be played. So uh, this is uh, absolutely appropriate. And then Joanna's own violin, this is not a, a museum instrument, but it was made by uh, Giovanni um, Morassi in Cremona in the 1960s. So it's a contemporary Cremonese instrument. And uh, Morassi was very important for reviving the tradition of violin making in Cremona. He studied at the violin making school that was founded there in the 1930s and was also an influential teacher in the school for uh, many years. So his instruments are extremely well respected. And uh, as we notice, the instruments sound wonderful together. So um, we'll enjoy hearing the, the last piece. This one to add, which wouldn't have been more welcome to the museum and the weather in the past few days and the changes. And, and we're coming now, no, we're not. We're coming tomorrow, no, we're not. Uh, so it's been really uh, amazing and, and everything, like, you know, I, I, I feel those strings would work on the instrument and they, they make it happen, so that's like amazing, so much uh, kindness and uh, we uh, are ending with a short piece, even though there are like very short movements, Grazina Batsevic was an absolutely amazing composer, violinist and pianist, and there are actually lots of videos on YouTube considering the time she lived in, she, she died uh, relatively young, like, 1960. Uh, she, uh, she, she's absolutely amazing. So she wrote a lot of fingerings and bowings in all the works that include violin. And uh, she wrote this particularly uh, suite uh, for several concerts. They were doing underground concerts during the Second World War, um, which were forbidden. Uh, so there is a lot of melancholy in those movements, and some of them are very fast and, 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 and kind of like, okay, we'll show you. Um, but she lost a lot of students uh, and, and families with the students were taken uh, by the Nazis. So, so um, I always thought she was so courageous uh, writing this music and, and uh, uh, making those concerts happen literally underground. So I hope you enjoy it.